Kenyan runner Abel Mutawi was only a few meters from the finish line, but got confused with the signs and stopped, thinking he had finished the race. A Spanish man, Ivan Fernandez, was right behind him and realizing what was going on started shouting to the Kenyan to keep running. Mutai did not know Spanish and did not understand. Realizing what was going on, Ivan Fernandez pushed Mutai to victory. A reporter asked Ivan, why did you do this? Ivan replied, my dream is that one day we can have some sort of community life where we push ourselves and help each other win, the reporter insisted. But why did you let the Kenyan win? Ivan replied, I didn't let him win. He was going to win. The race was his. The reporter insisted and asked again, but you could have won. Ivan looked at him and replied, but what would be the merit of my victory? What would be the honor of this medal? What would my mother think of it? This is Shavarsh Karapetian, a retired Armenian swimmer. In 1976, he had just completed a 26 kilometers, 16 mile run when he heard a loud crash. A trolleybus had lost control and had fallen into a reservoir. It was 25 meters, 82 feet offshore and had sunk to a depth of 10 meters, 33 feet Karapetian immediately dived into the sewage-infested waters and managed to kick the back window of the trolleybus with his legs, despite zero visibility from the silt that had risen from the bottom. Of the 92 passengers on board, Karapetian pulled out 46 people, 20 of whom survived. The combination of cold water and the multiple lacerations from glass shards led him to be hospitalized for 45 days. He developed pneumonia and sepsis. While he was able to recover, damage to his lungs prevented him from continuing his career as a swimmer. I knew that I could only save so many lives. I was afraid to make a mistake. It was so dark down there that I could barely see anything. One of my dives, I accidentally grabbed a seat instead of a passenger. I could have saved a life instead. That seat still haunts me in my nightmares, he said. In 1985, Karapetian came upon a burning building with trapped people inside. He rushed in and began pulling people out. He was badly burnt and had to once again be hospitalized later in life. He moved to Moscow and founded a shoe company called Second Breath. He is still alive today and continues to run his business. In 1996, Binti Jua, an eight-year-old female Western lowland gorilla, tended to a three-year-old boy who had fallen into her enclosure at the Brookfield Zoo in Illinois. The child had climbed the wall and fallen 24 feet 7.3 meters, breaking his hand and receiving a large gash on his face. Binti walked over and cradled the boy in her arms. She carried him over to the service entrance and handed him over to her zookeepers. Her 17-month-old baby, Kula, clutched her back throughout the whole ordeal. For many months after the incident, Binti received special treats and food from her caretakers and drew in huge crowds. She is still alive today at 33 years old and has three granddaughters and one great-grandson. In 1996, a newborn baby girl was left in a garbage can near the city of Kolkata, India. Three friendly street dogs discovered and protected her for nearly two days, even attempting to feed the child before authorities were contacted and the young one was saved. In 1912, Jim Thorpe, a Native American, had his running shoes stolen on the morning of his Olympic track and field events. He found this mismatched pair of shoes in the garbage and ran in them to win two Olympic gold medals that day. He was also the first Native American to win a gold medal for the United States. Three Jewish men who all survived the Auschwitz concentration camp and were liberated on the same day, reunite 73 years later, 2019. All these men survived the camp 
and their tattoos have the difference of the number 10, meaning they were all in the camp at the same time. All these men went on to have families and good lives. The lady circled in red was Lucy Higgs Nichols. She was born into slavery in Tennessee, but during the Civil War, she managed to escape and found her way to 23rd Indiana Infantry Regiment, which was encamped nearby. She stayed with the regiment and worked as a nurse throughout the war. After the war, she moved north with the regiment and settled in Indiana, where she found work with some of the veterans of the 23rd. She applied for a pension after Congress passed the Army Nurses Pension Act of 1892, which allowed Civil War nurses to draw pensions for their service. The War Department had no record of her, so her pension was denied. Fifty-five surviving veterans of the 23rd petitioned Congress for the pension they felt she had rightfully earned, and it was granted. The photograph shows Nichols and other veterans of the Indiana Regiment at a reunion in 1898. She died in 1915 and is buried in a cemetery in New Albany, Indiana. Albina Molly Hover was a Slovenian fighter who was wounded in combat several times during WW2. She joined the People's Liberation Movement at 16. She was wounded twice at 17. She was wounded again by an exploding mine three days after her 18th birthday. She continued fighting and working as a nurse for the rest of the war. She lived until the age of 75. A train of Jewish prisoners intercepted by Allied forces. In this photo, they then realized that the train would not be heading to a concentration camp. They had been liberated, taken on April of 1945, by Major Clarence Benjamin.